to be there for joy. So I was talking about, and when I found out he wasn't doing you know, I was on my way, and I've always been on my way, and I always will be here for joy. And your sister and your brother, like, if y'all need me, y'all can call me. I'm not far, you know, because if I was in here, he would take care of my children the same. And he was a great man. Amen. Do we have another? Come on up, brother. Uh, for you guys who don't know me, I'm Japoree's cousin, James Jenkins. Um, I see a lot of people in the room here. Um, I know one thing about my cousin, he brought a lot of people together. You know what yeah. I'm saying, though, real deal, because I've been coming to LA from the Bay Area since we were 16 years old. Look at a lot of us now, we're in our 40s, and you know, he kept contact, he kept friends, you know what I'm saying? He let me experience things as a kid that, you know, things that is priceless and river you know what I'm saying? I could never, ever, like, it's a number right now to this day, I don't know if he's in this room, 818-777-1000, that's the Lord's number, hello? Tyrant, you know, um, there's just so many things, though, just, you know, they, they just, his career as a writer, you know what I'm saying, just the place that he was able to be at, to be exposed to as a kid, you know, before he had a record deal as a young kid. A lot of people don't know that, you know what I'm saying, though, because it's such a good place for all time, and his music, his life, his legacy, you are going because a lot of us, you know, we brought together, you know what I'm saying, so you always will remember him, you know what I'm saying, you can know, our cousin of this.
street down Pico coming home from school I went to Dorsey I don't know why my mama sent me there but she sent me there <laughs> and uh this bald-headed guy rolling in a pathfinder beating down Pico come to think about it you ain't had no hair for a long time bro. <laughs> just to think about it <laughs> but um uh, Pulled over, like, what's your name? I'm like, I'm Jazz. What's up? <coughs> Find out I rap. And uh, he has been my biggest supporter from day one. He took me everywhere. And everybody that I know here today is because Jacori introduced me to you guys. And I want to say thank you, bro. I appreciate that. 25 plus years. You've been my friend. Amen. We ain't never had an argument. Ooh. And when you can get up and stand up and talk about somebody so high, it just see chills down my spine, brother, because you was a good friend to me. And you connected a lot of people, bro. And he just wanted his credit. And all he wanted to do was his music. Yes. And he would call me every day and say, You still working? <laughs> man, guys, you tripping. You need to do your music, man. The game wide open waiting for you, man. And that's all he wanted to do was bring everybody together. So uh, I appreciate him. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I, I want to tell X, Xavier, boy, I love you. Tom, boy, I love you. Chris, boy, I love you. Speedy, boy, I love you. Bo Rock. Boy, I love you. Y'all really, really know what's up. And if I didn't mention your name, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry I didn't mention your name because 
Them was the real ones. Day ones. You just didn't fall into that category. I apologize. I gotta keep the one, honey. But to the ones after us, I gotta give you your love and your due diligence because your Corey was well loved. If you hear you, you love my boy, and and it is, it is no disrespect to the new, you know, and the new family. But I would be wrong if I sat here and didn't. Give my boy that last time on the mic. Amen. God bless you. It's a lot of love. I heard a lot of love today. That's what it's about. Love. Praise God. I had to get up here and do this. I didn't want to. For you guys that don't know me, I'm Exo's wife. I was Jason's sister. I'm Exo's wife, Jason's sister. From the day I met him, I don't take people well. My godfather can tell you that. My god sister, I don't take people in well. From the day I met him, he was like family. He always have a positive attitude. He always has a smile on his face. And like I hear several people say, he's there for you. He don't like to argue. He'll do, ah, oh, man, stop it, knock it off. That was his thing. But if you call him, he's coming. And for everyone that I see that came out and showed the respect to him today, I just want to tell all y'all I appreciate you. Because the last final days of what we went through with him, was very, very hard. Bombay, his wife, my sister-in-law, Kiva, my other sisters, my husband, when he came to our house, he said, bro, I don't wanna die in a home. I wanna die here with you. So XO was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this, but I'm gonna just keep praying that God gonna give me the strength to do this. We watched this man come and go through so much pain that none of y'all know the pain he was going through. Bombay, his wife, my sister-in-law, we seen it. If I could tell y'all he was popping Percocets like Tic Tacs. Then he started taking, what was it? Morphine, Morphine Percocets, and Norcos all in one point to fight to get through this pain. Got up at his last words. I couldn't even stay in the house because I just lost my brother to cancer in March, so I couldn't do it. Got up, and I'm sitting outside, and this is a person that couldn't get out the bed, couldn't feed himself. He got out the bed, came in the living room and said, let's party, I'm ready to party. He told my husband, I'm ready to smoke, give me a drink, I'm ready to do this. At that day, he accepted that God said, I'm ready for you. He came in there, he sat in the living room for 20 minutes. He went back in his bed. The next day, me and my husband was talking. I was talking to Nate. My husband said, he didn't talk to me in Bombay and he ain't gonna make it. He's not gonna make it a day. I kept saying, then me, no, nah, let's just keep praying. God got him. He told me personally, I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna get through this. The next day, Exactly at three o'clock, my husband called me, June 14th. He said, babe, he's taking his last breath. I don't know what to do. They tried to give him a pain pill. All I can remember in my head is my husband saying he was screaming, help me, as he was kicking in the bed. My husband sat right beside his bed, named Bombay. He held his hand. He said, bro, I promised you I was going to ride this out to you to the end. I promised you that. And he held his hand as Jay took his last breath. He looked up at my husband, and I'm on the phone with him. And my husband told him, it's okay. God got you. Go ahead and close your eyes, bro. To sit here and see somebody close 
your friend's eyes. And then I hear all these phone calls about people questioning him about how he doing and what he doing. Sorry, I had to say this out. He's laying real good Amen. with the help of some people, but he's Amen. laying real good. My husband fought it all the way to the end. Amen. So anybody that have questions, the questions should be done today. Because when you see this man, this man is laid to rest looking peaceful as ever in his favorite colors. He got music symbol on his thing. We brought him out the way he wanted to go out. He didn't say cremate me. This is what he wanted to do and we filled his wishes to the day, Amen. which is today what he wanted to do. So if anybody have any questions, here's the answers for you. Here's the proof for you. Because when we lift this up, you're going to say what I'm saying. He's peaceful. He look good. Job well done. Amen. But first of all, we got to give it to God first. Because God had to give them the strength to do it. And like my mom said, everybody always sit back and say, well, I would have did it this way. I would have did it that way. I would have did this. I would have did that. But I didn't see nobody doing it but him. So, amen. Thank all y'all for coming. Thank you, baby. We want to view the video. The last video, I believe, that he did before he passed. He done before he passed. And so they're getting that ready, and Zay, I salute you, baby. Real talk, real in the field, man. 
thinking about how to bring this particular eulogy. No. Well, a young man I really did not know, but I know Xavier. I know Chiffon. No, 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 no. They reached out to me, and I could tell that they were hurting, and I can tell that this young man meant a lot to them. And because he meant a lot to them, I went into meditation concerning James Jenkins Jr. When I first heard his name, I, I, I thought about, wow, that's Triple J. Wow. And I just found out the day that he was born in Maryland, Baltimore. I was born in Washington, D.C., a sister city. So he's an East Coast brother like me on the West Coast trying to seek his fame and fortune. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I thank God for his life and for his legacy here. Hey. Reading from 1 John chapter 3, verses one through three, the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, 
now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Praise God. Going to the book of James, fourth chapter, beginning at the 14th verse, the Bible says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that we ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. James Jenkins Jr., strong man. All of you said that. But we find, amen, that his life was not a storybook, not a fairy tale. We see that he had been battling colon cancer for quite some time. Yet, he had the option to try to make everybody he knew smile. He tried to bring joy to people. Yeah. He had concern in his heart for folks. Yeah. I heard that he always would ask those, are you okay? Amen. Amen. And it lets me know that he was a man of faith. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I also heard, praise God, that he didn't understand how to say no. That he always was there, amen, trying to help someone. Even the folks he didn't even know. He always lend a helping hand. Now, I don't know about you, but he has traits of his father God. Because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I can see, amen, that Brother Jenkins was a giver. Amen. No nonsense player. No nonsense. And that's me. I, I don't have time for that nonsense. Amen. If you got that yak, get away from me. Just, just get away from me. Because I'm all, all about positivity, nothing about negativity. Do you hear what I'm saying? We find that this young man, hallelujah, was not perfect. Let me tell you something real, real good. You're not perfect. Let me tell you something even better. I'm not perfect. There was only one perfect man that walked this earth, and they called him Jesus. And he came here, listen, with a mandate. And his mandate, amen, was to show us how to get it right. Show us how to do it. What did he do when he was here? Praise God, hallelujah. He fed the hungry. Amen. He healed the sick. Praise God. And he tried to help folks. And what did they do to him? They ridiculed him, talked about him, beat him, and then hung him on the cross. But he came, praise God, with a mandate to give his life so that you, you, and you can live.
I want that. Yes, behind. Hundred dollar gift card and spirit. Watch it with one eye. Because they don't have on the freeway. You talking about what that nigga? Hey, spirit. You talking about what that nigga lost his wallet and shit? The fuck lost everything. I said, nigga, how the fuck? He said, I ain't Oh my god. Savior, everybody talking about pride this, pride that. Be proud to be sons and daughters of God. Amen. Be proud, amen, to say, he died for me. And I'm going to at least try to live a life that's pleasing for him. Amen. Put your hands together. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, amen, that Jesus is Lord, God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. My prayer for everyone here, my prayer, listen to me, for my people, y'all my people, the 
that you all will get saved. And that you all will accept Jesus as your Savior. Because Jesus is the only one that will ride with you to the end. Yes. Amen? Amen. One more time, give God a hand of praise. Amen. 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 At this time, I believe we're going to have the final viewing. Amen. Because they got my time a little short. Because you know, I can ride at least four or five hours. <laughs> I can get it. Amen. Amen. But we want to be respectful. I believe you guys have heard, and it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's how you say it. Yep. Amen. And I've already prayed. I was up three o'clock this morning praying that God would allow his Holy Spirit to take what I'm saying and shove it in your spirit to give you something to meditate on. To give you something, amen, to sit back, hallelujah, and ask him to get closer and closer in your heart. How many Lakers fans do we have in here? Not too many? I don't, I don't see nothing in the back. You guys in the back, you guys not Lakers? Well, whatever fan you are. <laughs> well, oh, y'all yeah. from, oh! Oh, man, I'm glad I ain't strapped. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I love you. I love you. I love you. Check this out. Y'all remember last year when they were playing in the bubble? You know, they had to separate themselves and get tested every so often so they could play. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I'm saying to you right now, get in the bubble with God. Have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. Let Him guide your walk, your talk, your actions, every action. Ask Him to lead you, and you will never go wrong. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Come on, brother. Where's the young lady at? Okay. I didn't want her beating on me. You get out your way, big dog. Our song. Are you ready? She might be. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. <laughs> I go. How y'all doing? Go to me. My name is Mo Rock. Um, Tim. A lot of y'all know what me as it? Jaboy's brother. What did you say? Special name. Me and Jaboy is not really brother. Over there? No. That might come to a shocker to a lot of y'all, but we're not real brothers. I just been knowing Jafori since we was kids, since he came out here from Baltimore. When he first came to Long Beach, okay, it was an incident where some of my homeboys as youngsters wanted to jump on him because he wasn't from Long Beach, okay, and he told them that I was his brother. <laughs> Okay. And I actually got in tour with my homeboy and claimed him as my brother. That's how tight we were. This is in the 80s. Okay. When his mom passed, my mom said, I'll be your mom. You don't have to worry. Even KP. KP is his cousin. That's his family. He even introduced me to his family as his brother. And he introduced me to his own blood family as his brother. That's how tight we were. I wouldn't have a career if it would not been for him. Okay, understand that. I would not have a career if it had not been for him. I was gang banging. In 88, 89, I was banged out the gang. Okay, 1990, I had an incident where I got locked up for something with him, okay? And he told me then, oh, you tripping, bro, you tripping, bro. You be up in there singing, because he had been to church with me. And I started off singing in church as a youngster. So he used to always be on my head like, man, if you ain't gonna do nothing, else, go sing gospel, just stop banging. Just stop banging. Go sing gospel, go do something. Well, I didn't go to gospel rally, but I followed what he led me to, okay? And again, I wouldn't be who I am if it had not been for his brother. He had influence in my 
my life since we was kids. I know he met a lot of y'all when he was an adult. He been the same way since he was young. I'm telling y'all, he been the same way. Only thing different was he used to dance his ass off. Y'all, a lot of y'all didn't know that. Before he used to dance his ass off. He used to want to be a hip hop dancer before he wanted to be in the music. And that's what he wanted to get off into, hip hop dancing. He even tried to be BBD once upon a time. You know what I'm saying? That's all he used to dress like, BBD. Bell Bill the Boy. We used to go to a club called Cannons in Long Beach. We used to sneak in there because we wasn't even old enough to get into the club. We sneak up in there just so he could dance. So he could dance against somebody who used to have a dance competition down there. So again, I don't even know what to say, bro. I, all I can do is thank you. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for motivating me. Thank you for being my brother. And XO, I gotta thank you because when my bro first got sick, I talked to him. And I was like, man, what, 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 what is that? What's that all about? You know? He's like, I oh, don't know, man. I got, I, got, I, got, I got that thing. You know? And when he said, I got that thing, I didn't know what he was talking about at first. You know? And then he explained that he had cancer. Back then, I offered him to come to LA. You should come to LA. Come out of Arizona. You know what I'm saying? You're out there in Arizona. He had just had an accident not too long before that on his bike. You know what I'm saying? He was going through a little relationship drama out there. And I'm like, man, bring your ass back to LA. Better come back home. You know what I'm saying? I got a spot for you.